right. Can uh, can you see this? Because <laughs> I can't see you anymore. <laughs> um, uh, is this visible? Uh, just or yes, it looks very good. Okay. Yep. Good. Um, okay. So uh, well, thank you for the uh, for the introduction. Um, that I think that was from LinkedIn, so that sounded a much more uh, confident than I actually am in person. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, um, the, <clears throat> so I I would like to talk about um, how we uh, introduce multilingual support um, for PyGeo API. Um, <clears throat> so let's get started right away. Um, so I'm uh, going to introduce a bit about uh, PyGeo API and the uh, well, the previous stage of uh, language support in there. Then I'm going to talk a bit uh, about uh, internationalization and localization, often abbreviated to uh, to these uh, obscure uh, terms I18N and L10N, um, and what's the difference? between them. Um, then I'm going to talk about uh, requirements. Uh, those aren't really requirements that uh, that someone made up, but uh, they, these are basically requirements that we decided that were important for uh, multilingual support. And then I'm going to show the solution, um, the, 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 the technology that we came up with to solve this. Um, and I'm hoping to do a little live demo for you, which is obviously not going to be very spectacular because if you do translations the right way, then you hardly notice that it works. Um, and uh, then I'm going to conclude with some uh, some final notes on this. <clears throat> so uh, I suppose that uh, everyone who is currently listening to this knows what PyGeo API is. Um, if you don't, uh, uh, so it's a Python server implementation of the OGC API suite of standards. There's currently a lot of them, um, but uh, the one that's currently approved is the features API, if I'm not mistaken. Then there's, uh, well, there's the maps API, there's the records API, um, the coverage API, uh, well, you name it. There's there's a whole bunch of them. You can find them on the OGC side, and uh, it's a really cool initiative that uh, well will be very powerful in the future when all these APIs have matured uh, to um, uh, well to obtain data in all kinds of ways. So a uh, PyG API uh, did not have and technically still doesn't have uh, language support until June 2021. Uh, that's when uh, when the PR uh, was approved and merged with the current master branch um, and uh, the official release that will also uh, support language uh, will uh, still needs to come. I think that's the 0.11 release. So until June, uh, PyGeo API was English only, um, and uh, all text was hard coded somewhere uh, in the in the core. Um, but um, so in the spring this year, we had a, a customer of ours uh, of GeoCat, um, and um, they are called the National Resources Canada, and uh, they're also they also have the Federal Geospatial Platform. Um, that's an initiative of them, um, and they had a cool project with this uh, API that they have. This is called the GeoCore API. It's kind of hard to find actually because lots of things are named GeoCore. I found out if you search for GeoCore and uh, National Resource Canada in that combination, you will find it. And this API. Um, um, can be still in an experimental state, uh, but they thought it was cool if PyGeo API would uh, offer a provider plugin uh, for this API as well. Uh, and one of the key features of this GeoCore API is that they also had a 
uh, language support built in. So they have, uh, of course, because it was Canada, they have French and English, obviously. Um, and uh, they thought, hey, it would be cool if Paizo API could deliver that data uh, in the same way. So that's how it started. And um, so then I started thinking, uh, or we started thinking, me and my colleague, uh, Paul uh, van Genucht, or back then he was still my colleague. Um, we started thinking like, what, um, what do we need for this project? So first of all, um, because PyJ API is very flexible and it's, it's working independently almost, well, not really, but uh, there's, it, it supports several web frameworks, so like Flask, Starlet, uh, Django, and uh, obviously there's more to come still, maybe a fast API support in the future, I don't know. Uh, but um, it, it was important that this multilingual stuff should work regardless of the web framework. So uh, that immediately also means that we should come up with something ourselves that integrates with everything. Uh, another aspect was that it should be customizable to a high extent so that uh, a PyGeo API maintainer uh, or developer can tweak all the things according to his needs or her needs. Um, and uh, it should also be an invisible uh, ut uh, utility, basically. So, that means by invisible, I mean that if you uh, if you disable it, or uh, then you don't know that it's that it's not there. Uh, if you enable it, it works, and you also don't really notice that it's there. Um, so it's uh, yeah, in that sense, it's invisible. Um, it should be easy to use. So for all types of users, for the developers, the translators, maintainers system maintainers, um, um, and of course the end user. Uh, and uh, it has to implement common standards uh, concerning localization. Uh, those are already thought up by uh, organizations like the World Wide Web Consortium. Uh, so a very common technique is to both support the query parameter uh, language selection, so you and you specify in your query string, in the get string, you specify lang is, and then uh, some extension of your language. Or you can use the accept language header um, um, to specify the language you want. This is also what uh, most browsers do. So if you have your system set to a specific language, then the accept language header is automatically sent by your browser which is uh, the language that uh, best matches your, uh, your locale, your system locale. Um, another requirement was that uh, uh, PyGeo API was already using the Jinja2 uh, HTML templating engine. Um, so it would be cool. Uh, we thought if it already could uh, use that, integrate well with that, uh, it would save us a lot of time. Uh, and the final aspect, uh, which was important, is that there should be a decoupling of the API core um, and the, the plugins, uh, that is uh, providers or the processes or so on. Uh, and by that, I mean that the API should uh, work independently uh, with, with language uh, from the, the plugins because the provider uh, might support different languages than the API core itself. That is a, 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 a reality. Um, so um, it, can, it could be, for instance, that you're uh, searching on PyGeo API using the HTML interface uh, and you, you, you want to retrieve data uh, in, I don't know, German, for, for example, but the API core has not been configured for that, but for English. Um, however, the provider, you know that the provider offers uh, data in German. Uh, so then this requested language should be passed on to the plugin and 
uh, it should return your language, uh, the, the requested language. So the solution uh, we came up with uses uh, Babel. Uh, Babel is a is a, a, a localization and internationalization utility, um, uh, and it's. Uh, I'm actually thinking now that <laughs> I I think there. Where is it? No. Huh. I thought I, th I think I have removed the slide. <laughs> Sorry for that. Anyway, um, the uh, I because in the in the uh, in the table of content it said that I should also tell the difference about internationalization and localization. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, the main difference basically is that internationalization is uh, is uh, the technique. Uh, provided uh, to enable localization, actually. So localization is that you offer multiple translations for uh, for different locales. So if there's a, you can imagine that, uh, for instance, uh, I don't know, Swiss, German. Uh, so that's the combination. Uh, the locale would then be uh, 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 D E C H. So German and Swiss, Switzerland as the locale. Uh, that is a different kind of language potentially uh, than uh, uh, high German, which is just the EDE. -E. Uh, so that's a locale. And uh, often it also comes with different settings related to how, um, for instance, uh, date formats are parsed or uh, how uh, uh, um, uh, currencies are parsed and so on. Uh, so internationalization is then the technology uh, provided to uh, to enable localization. Actually, so the work that we were doing here it mainly involved uh, internationalization. So now back to the solution. Babel uh, offers uh, already a lot of utilities to do this. Uh, this is a Python library and also some uh, command line interface tools. Um, and um, uh, Babel is uh, not to be confused with uh, Babel, JavaScript Babel, that's a transpiler, that's something else. Um, it's based on uh, GetText, uh, also a common uh, GNU uh, tool, uh, which works with these po.po uh, po translation files. Um, so uh, you can compile uh, translations um, and then uh, when the language is requested, the, the, the right language is replaced in your HTML template. And that also brings us to the second point. Babel already has this out of the box integration with the Jinja 2 template engine. So you can uh, simply add these, uh, these special tags in your HTML template and they, uh, these trans tag, uh, tags, and they will be replaced with, uh, with uh, the, the translation in the translation file. Um, so, uh, what was also important is that we needed to normalize the PyJu API core uh, API and the provider base modules. Uh, they were all working in a slightly different way. Uh, so, uh, we needed to, uh, to smoothen that a bit and uh, make sure that, uh, that they were all uh, passing the same kind of request and so on. Uh, so we actually did lots of uh, lots of stuff in the in the core API, which I will not bore you with right now. Um, uh, but if you, in the end, uh, what we decided as a first support for uh, for provider languages uh, is the the get the query and the metadata functions uh, in the provider. Uh, those are language aware. Um, other functions can be made language aware, but they're probably less relevant to most of you. Um, we also de developed a whole new module uh, that deals with all the uh, translation stuff. Uh, part of that is based on uh, Waxoid's um, best match method, uh, which figures out the correct language uh, from the accept header or the query parameter passed in. 
um, there's a lot more to it than you than you might think because these these accept language headers can be quite complex. You can specify multiple languages in your uh, in your request, for instance, also with a weighting uh, factor. Um, uh, so yeah, this uh, this module has been developed for that, and um, uh, we add. Uh, in the end, we added translations in the YAML config, the current YAML config, uh, PyGeo API, and the HTML templates, of course. Uh, but uh, those, we still need more uh, in the future. So this is just in a nutshell uh, what it all comes down to. Uh, so we have the configuration here on the on the left side, the YAML file. So basically, what you do, you specify. The languages that uh, the PyJo API core supports. You can specify languages here that, uh, or locales, I have to say, that uh, provider support. Uh, and then you can also enter uh, different translations for uh, text strings inside your uh, configuration uh, with these uh, special language uh, structs. Um, so in the core module, uh, the, for instance, the the get method, as discussed before, the query uh, method for a provider, uh, they get, uh, they receive the raw locale uh, from the original language request. Uh, so, and uh, uh, the core will figure out based on the languages defined, uh, sorry, here, um, it will figure out what the best match is for the provider. So that doesn't need to be the same language that the core uh, speaks. Um, so uh, at the bottom, you see some essential functions uh, inside the, the language module. Uh, and uh, here's an example uh, specific to this uh, customer, this uh, Federal Geo Platform of Canada, uh, that this, uh, this plugin that we made. And there you can see that the language is, is passed in initially with a, with a non value. Uh, but it, of course, receives the right locale from the core. Um, and last but not least, there's the translation files and the uh, HTML templates. So I can now uh, show you, hopefully, and I can also see how much time I still have left. Yes. Uh, I can hopefully show you how this uh, would work. So this is uh, this is the default uh, PyGeo API instance. You see, uh, it's in English, um, but I could request this site in the French language, for instance. This has been configured for this uh, specific case, and then we will see that some text strings, not all of them, because we still have some work to do, but uh, most of the text strings here are translated nicely to French. Uh, this also applies actually to the to the JSON string. Here you still see the English one, uh, but again, if you request it, sorry, if you request it in French, uh, then you should also see some strings. Not all of them, but some strings get translated to French as well. So back to the main entrance. Um, here is uh, the provider that we created for uh, for FTP for Canada. Um, it's uh, I have to warn you, it's a bit slow this API actually. So it so often takes some time. Um, this stuff over here, this is in English always. <laughs> Uh, that's still hard coded in the PyGeo API core, um, and uh, yeah, I still need to make a PR for that to uh, to fix this and make this fully translatable as well. Um, so we can browse uh, through some items. Uh, as I said, yeah, it's quite slow. So here you see uh, some items uh, and. Uh, this, uh, so the, also the description, everything here. Uh, these are record, this is a records API, by the way. Um, um, this, this is all in English. 
And if I translate this, I can again say the language is French, and this is passed on uh, to the uh, GeoCore API, and it will also deliver me with descriptions again here in French. Um, so you can say, well, this is not very exciting, and why do I need to add this lang is fr uh, all the time? I fully understand that you might think so, uh, but uh, so there is this setting. I will do this manually now um, in, in this case, Google Chrome, but I think everyone has it. And now I can say that the French Canadian language here, um, uh, let's move this other drag thing, move to the top. So now immediately effective, I should get the, uh, the French result only because my browser is now sending automatically the accept language header for French. And again, it's, I apologize for how slow this uh, API is. Once again, this is not the PyGeo API, uh, but the GeoCore API. Um, and like I said, I didn't pass in a, a, um, a query parameter here, and yet I get the French uh, results for uh, for this record. So that works uh, in a really nice way, I think. Um, so back to the to the presentation. Uh, some final notes. Uh, so pretty soon. I'm not sure. We have to talk to Tom Kralidis for that. Um, the, the next release will come, so the, the 011, probably. Uh, and that will have language support. And then also the demo on the, the official demo on the PyGeoAPI.io site will probably also be language aware, which it isn't right now. Um, um, another thing we need to do still is uh, find and set up some translation editing tool so it's easier to uh, to make translations. And Transifex is a well-known one. Uh, it's the, 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 the QGIS community works with that thing. Um, which brings us to the next point. We need translators for, uh, for all the languages. I think we currently did some German, French, and English only. Uh, but uh, that's uh, as much language skills as we have in the team. So that's it. Um, we have to, like I said, remove hard-coded text strings from the code base that we can still find. Uh, then uh, there, well, here's the link to the documentation uh, about the language. You can check that out yourself. Uh, that shows you how it all works and how it should be set up if you want to work with it. Um, and then, um, yeah, so the, uh, yeah, the API docs on the localization model. It's not available yet, uh, but that's uh, still on my to-do list. If you have any questions, uh, technical questions, if you want to work with this or you have problems with it, then please contact me. Uh, so I can be reached. Uh, that's my Twitter hook, but it's also my username on uh, GitHub, so you can find me there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just one thank you to uh, Paul of Nurk and my, as I said. Uh, my former colleague from Geocat, now working at Isric, uh, he did a lot of uh, the thinking work behind this. Uh, then, of course, Tom Carlides for well, doing everything, PyGeo API. Uh, and then Bo Lu and Chris uh, Melnick McDonald from uh, FGP, National Resource Canada, for providing all the, uh, the API documentation on Geocore. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sandler. Um, yeah, adding uh, language support to an existing project is always a challenge. I've seen that uh, before, so that is, that is nice work. And um, there, uh, there are two questions I see. Um, also for myself to know, um, I, I bring in, you can you can see, uh, so I read it, uh, has language support actually been integrated already in the, let's say, the main branch of PyGeo API? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> so the, 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 the PR has been merged 
actually two PRs. So there was uh, the internationalization part. Uh, so that's the, really the, 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 the Python code to, to make it work. Uh, that was merged before. And then uh, Paul, I think, uh, recently uh, merged another PR uh, that uh, makes these uh, this HTML templates work. Uh, of course, not everyone needs that. Some people really don't care about that aspect, but uh, some people do. Um, so uh, there you will find the, uh, the, the these PO files uh, that Babel uses. Uh, for the okay. Yeah, and um, okay. but I think that out of the box currently it doesn't work. I try to uh, download the or uh, uh, check out the, the the master branch and just see if it already worked, and it didn't. So you still need to do a couple of things uh, to make it work at the moment. Also, the like I said, the demo. Uh, but I think you know that better than I do. Yes. Uh, the, uh, the demo the, website, you mean? The demo website, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not sure from which state that is, uh, from which uh, no. commit that is built, uh, but that also doesn't have any working uh, uh, okay. stuff yet. So I'm, I'm so, really hoping that the 011 release will, uh, will feature that. Okay. Yeah, that's good. We're always honest about uh, the stability of. Uh, the, or the state of uh, our open source. Yeah, maybe there are people now that say, well, I'll, I will fix it for you. And uh, we'll, we always welcome uh, PRs, pull requests. Um, and yeah, th um, there's a second question. We still have like three minutes. So um, so how can, or maybe can people maybe already contribute to new or updated translations or I saw you mentioning the Transiflex, or or can they edit yeah, so the old files? Yes, exactly. That's it. We we didn't uh, hook it up to to something like Transiflex yet. That uh, would mm -hmm. be uh, fairly interesting to do. Uh, although I'm not really sure. I think yeah, it's it is a uh, yeah, it's it's not really sure what the how Transiflex works. <laughs> to be honest, uh, I it's I mean it's not a it's not really an open source tool or anything. It's, a, it's I think it's a, it's a commercial product, but they do have some exceptions for for uh, non-commercial projects or something. But there's there's I think there's limitations. <laughs> okay, I can't help you. I know the Cubis project and probably the the Mapbender project. They also have something. Maybe it's Sunsyflex, but um, maybe we can ask uh, ask them yeah, as well. well. I was told it was Transifex for uh, for the Qgis uh, community, but uh, yeah. Okay. So um, uh, I'm just thinking. Uh, no, no, sorry. Yeah, you had another question. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We're also uh, almost on, on time, and I can uh, imagine we're we're also uh, in the, in the middle of uh, development or now quite far, but uh, this is really, really valuable for the project. So uh, thanks and thanks for this presentation, Sander. And uh, yeah, no we'll, uh, we'll uh, see you, uh, people can talk to you on the icebreaker. I've well, already seen people breaking ice, opening bottles, but uh, we still have uh, three <laughs> talks here. Um, okay, thanks. And uh, we'll go to the uh, next uh, session.